Good morning. I haven't heard anything from any of you about how you feel about the wind, so would anyone like to? Oh, maybe you've mentioned it. Um, isn't it great to be here in, in the Midwest? Did anyone try the trick of not putting your foot on the gas to see if the wind would blow you here, or was that just a joke? I am glad to be in worship with you this morning. Uh, announcements, again, always printed for you on the bulletin there, some, some upcoming events, some things going on. Uh, hope you can join us today for our potluck and, and take a look at that multi-purpose room downstairs and all the hard work that has gone into that. Um, there is a thank you here from Lynn as well uh, that she had submitted, thanking everyone for the, the prayers and the cards and the visits and her recovery after her surgery. And uh, then this week, Lynn was involved in a, a minor car accident, which she was not injured, but uh, she did say, poor Sparky, which is her little blue car. 
uh, got, got wrinkled a little bit. So um, she's got some inconveniences in her, her world this week. So keep Lynn in your prayers. Continue to keep her in your prayers. Um, if you'll allow me before we uh, head downstairs after the service, someone remind me if I miss it. I'd like to pray for our meal before we go downstairs so that we don't have to regather when we are down there uh, before the meal. And like I said, that is my intention. But if I forget, just please throw something at me or um, let me know so that we can cover those bases as well. Uh, other announcements I'd like to share with you that in the future, I can't give you um, a, a certain timeline, but probably the end of May, uh, perhaps the 28th of May, which would be Memorial Day weekend, uh, my Excelsior congregation is going to begin joining you for worship here at Melford. They are doing some major renovations out at the Excelsior Church, the facility, and uh, will probably be worshiping, worshiping with you throughout the summer. So. Um, I look forward to having us join together in that way, and um, I, I am trying my best to make the preparations to have everyone understand and be welcomed and feel as part of a, a group together, but there again, there's some uncertainties and question marks about the timeline and how that's all going to work out, but uh, be looking for those faces next month and uh, probably throughout the summer, so uh, more information about that to come. As we prepare our hearts for worship this morning, um, would you clear your, your thoughts, take out the garbage, get rid of anything standing between you and God this morning so that you are free to worship, and uh, we'll allow Sue to lead us in some centering music. Would anyone like to lead us in prayer as a call to worship this morning? I'll offer that opportunity if you'd like to. Would you be willing to lead one another in our Lord's Prayer? Yes. stand to do that. Pray with me, friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's join in some praise this morning.
take a moment to greet one another this morning? So we have been doing a, a sermon series here talking about prayer, and I, I really want to share a story with you this morning. But before I do that, I would like to offer uh, somewhat of a disclaimer about this story. Um, what I'm going to be telling you about was my personal experience. I am not going to stand up here and promise uh, that every single one of you will have the same experience that I've had. Um, in fact, I don't manage to always repeat the experience myself, um, but I do think that you will agree after hearing the story that something awesome happened, and that was because of prayer. So again, we're talking about, uh, we're in a series about prayer, and we're gonna be talking today about seeing specific answers to specific things that you pray for. Today's message is entitled, uh, pray like you mean it. Um, it's been a few years ago now, but I, uh, when I was in seminary, um, one of the times I was in seminary, which my, I knew my husband would <laughs> give me that because he understands, um, I had a, a wonderful professor who, who liked to give assignments that were maybe just a little out of the norm and, and just thought-provoking things. And he gave us an assignment uh, that we were to pray. Not, that wasn't the assignment to pray. We were all praying already. But in our prayers, he, he asked that we would ask God to specifically put someone on our heart in prayer. That we were to open ourselves up to hear a name or see a face um, and ask God to identify someone specifically uh, that we might need to reach out to or that we might need to pray for. And he says, and, and, and pray for that person in your prayer. And I'm thinking, well, check, right? I, I do that. So I, this assignment I've already aced. But then he said, I would also like you then to contact that person. Make sure that you contact that person. Tell them they showed up in your prayers. You're not sure why, but... If there's a reason that, that they're on your heart, that God put them there, what, what might that be? And how, basically, how can I pray for you? What's going on in your life or what's happening? How can I pray for you? And I, I do want to interject something important here. It's, it's not that I didn't pray for people before. Um, certainly, I, I just happened to be walking around and somebody would cross my mind or... You know, someone would pop into my head and I'd be like, gosh, I haven't seen them for a while and I'll pray for them. And, and I, I, I would have prayed for that person. I would have definitely prayed for them. Um, but I would have prayed a prayer that maybe sounded something along the lines of, God, please be with so-and-so. And, you know, I haven't heard for them. I'm thinking from the, about them. And... and Give this person what they need and take care of them and, and bless them. Amen, right? But not bad, right? You're thinking, that's pretty good. 
How many of you are sitting there right now thinking, yeah, that, good job. Popped into your mind, you prayed for him, you asked God to be with him. If you're, if you're thinking that that prayer sounds fine and that nothing is missing, that I'm actually really excited for you because like me, you have a lot to learn about prayer and we get to do that together. I'm looking forward to it. Let me go back to the story. Uh, this is what happened when I prayed as my professor had assigned the, the first time that I very intentionally asked God, put someone on my heart, in my thought, in my mind, show me their face, who should I be praying for? And when that happened, when I was, when I was given a name and that person, I, I did pray for that person. And then I called that person. And when I called that person, I didn't mess around too much with a lot of niceties. We didn't talk about the wind or the weather. I said, I know we haven't spoken for a while. I, I'm wondering how you're doing. Uh, God really put you on my heart for prayer today. And I'm wondering if there's something that I might help you with or that I might pray about with you. And uh, this is a, a woman that I consider to be a, a peer and a friend. Her response to me was, how did you know? Almost offended. And I said, how did I know what? And she says, did you hear? Is it in town already? I said, I don't know anything. I... And she said, oh, I thought maybe you had heard. And I said, what happened? And she said, we had a major falling out in our family. Um, there's, there's been some underlying animosity for quite some time. And this is in her immediate family. And she said, we... Things kind of came to a head. There was a large argument at a family gathering. There was harsh words. There was actually a physical altercation between members of my family. The words, I will never speak to you again, I hate you, things like that were used. And she said, I think we, it might be over for my family. And I said, can I pray for you? Can we pray about that? And we prayed about that. And a couple days later, she called me to thank me. She said, we don't have things ironed out just yet, but she said, by you reaching out to me, that encouraged me to reach out to a family member. We are talking. We're going to try to get together this weekend and figure some of this out. She said, I don't know what's going to happen, but... She said, how you knew to call me on that day and pray that prayer with me is amazing. And I thought, cool. <laughs> right? I was pretty impressed. I'm like, this, this God that I've been working with and, and learning about is pretty cool. I thought, I'm going to try that again. So the next time I did that, very intentionally opened myself up, said, God, give me that person. Who am I supposed to be paying attention to? Who needs you? How can I shine a light on you for them? God gave me another person, a young woman, uh, a young mother at the time. Um, I, I, I would call her a friend, but she was really more of an acquaintance, didn't know her really well. But there she was. That name, that face. And I prayed for her and asked God to show me how I might reach out to her, how I can help. And when I called her, guess what she said? When I said, God put you on my heart and I, I'm wondering if we can pray about something or if there's something going on. Guess what she said? Just, just guess. How did you know? <laughs> she said, how did you know? She didn't ask me if I had heard. She did ask me, how did you know? She said, this is probably the worst day of my life. And I said, what's going on? And she said, everything and nothing. And she said, I am so stressed out. 
Uh, she had two little ones at the time and she was working full time and she said, I really, really, really want to find a way to be part time so I can be home with my kids. Her husband was a truck driver over the road trucking and he's gone a lot of the time. She said, my heart is telling me I need to be home more. My checkbook is telling me we can't do that. And, and in this conversation, as she is talking, I'm already thinking, wow, my prayer has changed. I can feel it. My prayer has changed from be with so-and-so to being very specific in terms of this is what this person needs. This is what we need to ask for. Uh, it wouldn't just be, you know, help them. It would be help them find a way to manage their finances. Uh, give them a way to change their employment. Help, help this person to feel as as though being a mother and, and, and managing her household and her kids and, and maybe part-time work, help her to find that way. And I was prepared to pray that with her, but unfortunately, um, we weren't able to pray together during that phone call because it was cut short. She was uh, needed to offer immediate response to a crying child. That was the type of day she was having. And, and friends, I've asked you before to consider when you, when you encounter someone, not to just say, I'll pray for you, but to actually pray with them. I didn't have that opportunity that day. And if for some reason uh, you can't pray with someone in the moment, whether they uh, are in an urgent situation or maybe they're just not in the space to pray, it's, it's okay to say, I will pray for you. But would you take that a step further? Uh, would you say something like, I'm, I'm going to pray that God is going to show us a way to manage your finances that will allow you to be part-time. I'm going to pray for that. I'm going to pray that you're going to find a way to be home with your kids more. I'm going to pray that God is going to calm your spirit. I, be, be specific in that. And, and I asked um, this, this woman also to pray in the same way, way with me during the week. That that's how I would be praying for her. Would you pray for the same thing? Friends, about a week and a half later, uh, I got a text message from her. It was a thank you uh, for contacting her, for reaching out. We hadn't spoken in quite some time. And she said, uh, again, she reiterated, I don't know how you knew that that was what I needed in that moment. But she said, I did pray, uh, and I, I felt your prayers with me as well. And she said, my husband and I are going to try and work on this situation. situation. And, and although they didn't have all the answers, they were suddenly feeling like things weren't so impossible. That was her, her response to me. Now things don't feel so impossible. Now, like I said, the first time I had done this little experiment, if you will, with, with prayer and it, it worked out, I thought, well, that's cool. The second time it happened, I was like, uh, whoa. I shared it with Trevin because I was overcome with the awesomeness of God. Uh, it was moving to me. It strengthened my faith significantly. I had asked God to put someone on my heart, and he did it. And when he moved me to reach out, that was exactly what they needed. The response being, how did you know? It wasn't how, it was who, right? They needed something very specific that we could pray for, and when we prayed for it, there were very real and evident ways that things changed. Now remember my disclaimer, I, I'm not going to tell you that that's how it will happen for you, that that's not how it happens every time that I pray. I don't always pray that way. I don't always receive that way. But I will tell you that once I opened up that style of communication with God, it, it changed not just how I prayed for people, but how I included people, how I followed through with people, how I built relationships with people. And I was also so much more in tune with God and my relationship with him. It changed the way we were in conversation with one another. And when I actually prayed for these people, not just in a broad, generic kind of way, but in a very specific and forward way, it was a totally different kind of prayer. Very different than how I had prayed before that. It felt different. The words were different. Uh, it involved my whole heart. It was, it was more than words. 
and it had so much more meaning. Pray like you mean it, right? I want to take you to the Bible, to the words of Jesus, uh, maybe offer some perspective. In Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 and 8, it says, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, everyone who seeks finds, and to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. What we have here is Jesus teaching on what is perhaps the most fundamental teaching on prayer in all the Bible, the assurance that prayer will be heard and answered. Uh, in, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, it says, So you see, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to him must believe that there is a God and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. It seems to be pretty important to God that we understand this. That we understand if we seek him, we will find him. Jesus repeats that, or reiterates that six times in just those two verses in that passage from Matthew. Ask and you will receive. Seek and you will find. Knock, the door will be open to you. Everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. Everyone who knocks, the door will be open. So this is where we need to start today when we talk about praying like we mean it. What does that mean? What does that even mean, pray like you mean it? I think it means, first of all, that we realize who we're talking to. Prayer is not public performance, friends. You're not, you're not talking to other people. It's not talking to yourself either. It's not just sorting out your thoughts in your head so you can make a list, and it's not just venting your frustrations so you can get on with your day, and it's not just simply vocalizing your thoughts and needs. It's a conversation with God. The conversation with God, the Almighty, the one who created you, the one who cares for you, the one who provides for you, the one who died for you, the one who prepares a place for you in heaven, that God. Who knows you better? No one. Who loves you more? No one. That's who you're talking to. That's who you are praying to. A God who is all-knowing and all-powerful. And he wants to have a conversation with you. What are your expectations in prayer? Is that what you expect when you go, when you, when you pray? When I asked, would anyone like to come and lead us in prayer this morning? Did you say, yeah, I want to talk to God? Or did you think, I can't get in front of people? Who are you talking to? What are your expectations in that conversation? Does your answer change at all when you truly realize who you are talking to? Who God is and what he can do? Jesus couldn't be any clearer in what he says here. I'm going to read it to you one more time. I want you to just let it sink in. Not, not as a quote, not as a quip, not as a sign that you hang in the living room. As a spiritual fact. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus' words here, ask, seek, knock. They mean almost the same thing in this context. And in each case, he repeats the promise in the same way. Ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Now, after giving us these promises, 
Jesus goes on to explain to us the, the spiritual reality behind, behind how it works. We miss this because it's so obvious, I think. But if we miss it, we miss the basis of prayer itself, okay? So in Matthew chapter 7, which is where we're at in this passage, that it's, we're in the Sermon on the Mount. It's Jesus' most famous sermon, the entirety of which is devoted to showing us what the kingdom of God looks like to pull back the curtain and reveal to us the principles of living in the kingdom of God. So Jesus is saying here that in the kingdom of God, askers are receivers. Seekers are finders. Door knockers are door enterers. That is the rule of the kingdom. Conversely, those who do not ask do not receive. Those who do not seek do not find. Those who don't knock, the door's not opened. It's, it's really that simple. It's that simple. I read a scripture from James last week that reinforces that point. In James chapter 4, verse 2, it says, We do not have because we do not ask God. So let's stop again for a moment. Let's... Think about this, because I can almost assure you that although we say we believe in the Bible, the vast majority of us us are not praying as if we really believe what Jesus says in the Bible about prayer. Most of us don't pray as if we really believe God's going to provide specific answers to specific prayers. Remember the example I gave you of how I, I would have prayed before that seminary assignment? Um, God, please be with so-and-so, give them what they need, whatever that is, take care of them. Now again, I'm not saying that's wrong. It's just weak. I want to be clear in saying that praying is better than not praying, okay? For sure. It's not about right and wrong, and, and again, Praying is better than not praying, but let's look at everything that's actually very lame about that kind of prayer that I was praying before. Uh, Because I've prayed prayers like that probably a thousand times, and I'm guessing maybe so of you. God, please be with so-and-so. Give them what they need. Take care of them. First of all, a prayer like that is is nonspecific. I prayed for God to provide for a need, but I obviously had no clue what I really wanted God to give that person. I didn't know what they needed. I didn't ask. Take care of them. Well, sure. But I wouldn't even really understand what I was praying for when I said that. What did it even mean? How often have I asked God to be with someone But again, I didn't specify how I wanted God to be with them. I didn't specify it because I didn't really know what I wanted. And I didn't have the guts to ask. Frankly, I didn't realize that I had the right to come to God and ask for what I wanted and what I wanted for others. I have the right Because askers receive and seekers find. Now don't misunderstand, that's not a guarantee that if you ask for what you want, that's what you get. It's a guarantee that your prayer will be heard and will be answered. Secondly, that that type of prayer, that type of prayer that I was praying was weak because it assumed that God is weak. That prayer of give so-and-so what they need, that prayer doesn't ask God, doesn't ask that God in his power will reveal to me what that person needs so I can help them get it. God, give them what they need, take care of them. That prayer doesn't ask that I will sense what the problem is and, and know how I need to pray, doesn't pray for God's supernatural wisdom to be mine, to know when to call someone. 
That type of prayer never considers the possibility that God might be able to or is interested in actually guiding me in how to pray for other people. Listen to this. Here here it is again. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call to me and I will answer you. I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. How cool is that? Call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. God tells us if we pray to him, if we ask him, he will tell us things we could not have known any other way except for him telling us. Remember those phone calls I made? First thing they said, how did you know? So I'm gonna ask you, when was the last time that you were praying And you learned something through prayer that you didn't already know. Is God telling you things? Is God telling you things? And if your answer is no, why do you think that is? Do you think it's because God doesn't want to tell you? Or do you think it's because God is a promise breaker? Or do you think it's because you're not really asking? You're not calling. You're not seeking. You're not knocking. A third problem with that prayer, my prayers of be with them, take care of them, doesn't really ask God to do anything. He's already with them. He's already taking care of them. It's really just a prayer that's kind of saying, you know, God, help them get through Thanks for maintaining the status quo, right? Is that where our sights are set in regard to what we're willing to ask of God? God, just get people through. Can you imagine Jesus standing in front of a man with a withered hand, a crippled hand, offering a prayer of, Father, please make sure this man never has to lift anything very heavy, right? Just get him through. Or when Jesus is is going to cast out a demon. Can you see him praying to the Father saying, Yeah, you know, this this guy looks kind of messed up. Can you just make sure he doesn't hit his head on a rock or bite his tongue or something while he's thrashing around? Get him through. Do you see it? Do you see how cowardly and weak and anemic our prayers usually are? I am not saying that it's never okay to pray with that broad umbrella, to throw out a a blanket of prayer, because sometimes we don't know specifics. We don't know names or we don't know the full extent of a situation. I understand that. We, we trust God to fill in the blanks. But let's, let's not forget that prayer needs to be offered in faith. And I'm telling you, most of us pray these generic and weak prayers because we don't have enough faith to pray real ones. We have a friend who is, is struggling We see it, and we pray, God, just just give them peace, right? Of course we want peace. It's a great prayer. But what is holding us back from asking God to remove our friend's source of struggle? Is it a lack of faith? Do we think God can't do it? Why not ask God to take away your friend's illness or straighten out their finances? Why not ask God to change their heart or change someone else's heart? Why not ask God to demolish whatever source of struggle is in your friend's life so that they may know peace? My challenge for you this week How many of you have met the challenge the past two? 
five minutes prayer every day. One, okay. Two. My challenge for you this week, would you pay attention to your prayers? Let's be specific. Who are you praying for? What are you asking God to do? And how will you listen for God's guidance in your next steps? And whatever you're hearing or seeing or feeling, write it down or share it with someone or or find a way to recognize what is happening through your prayers. Hold on to God's word. And let's, let's ask and seek and knock with the faith that we will receive and we will find and the door will be open to us. Let's pray like we mean it to a God who can do so much more than we can possibly imagine. Friends, I'm going to ask you to open your hymnals to number 713. You can remain seated. We're going to sing together as we go into a time of prayer this morning. (coughs) Hymn number 713, Seek Ye First. Uh, We're going to have everyone sing together verses 1 and 2. Then the praise team is is going to offer a verse 3. If you are familiar with it, you may sing along. It is not printed for you in the hymnal there, but if you know it, please sing along. And then following that, we will sing verse 1 again to close that song. So seek ye first, number 713. As we move into a time of prayer, I encourage you to find a posture that is comfortable for you. Sitting, standing, eyes closed, eyes open, head bowed, face up, hands open, hands folded. With permission, hold the hand of the person beside you. I said with permission. My kid is the funny one. I should make you do it. Okay. But but find that position of prayer that is comfortable for you. If at some point during our prayer time, God puts a name on your heart and you choose to speak that, feel free to do that. Um, I'm not going to stop praying. You can pray along with me. You can speak at the same time. It's okay. 
Uh, if God puts a name on your heart that you just want to write down on a piece of paper, feel free to do that as well. Uh, let's go to a time of prayer. Good morning, God. Thank you for today. Thank you for this place and for these people. Would you turn up in our messy lives this week? God, show us uh, that you exist. Show us that you're in the middle of everything and, and bring us to that center. Some of us, as we come to pray in this moment, Lord, some of us are, are hurting or someone that we love is, is hurting. Maybe we've been injured in some way, accidentally or intentionally, we've been harmed. And that brokenness needs repair. Please heal our wounds, Lord. Our, our physical bodies, those bruises on our bodies, our, our emotional scars, our broken hearts, the spiritual damage that we've sustained along the way. God, restore us. Restore us in such a way that we are better able to offer help and healing to others as well, uh, learning from the work that you do within us. If it's, if it's a chronic illness that we face, or for those caring for someone who might be undergoing treatments or therapies to manage an ongoing struggle, our prayer is for renewed strength. Give us energy and stamina to persevere. Help us to meet each and every day with hope and with optimism. For those who may be suffering loss, if we are mourning someone, if we've lost someone and, and now we feel lost, would you extend to us, Lord, uh, that peace that surpasses understanding, knowing that each and every day we've got to find a, a new normal, a, a new way to cope. We're, we're looking for encouragement. We're looking for the clarity and how we're supposed to move forward. God, would you keep a close eye on our young people, too, Lord, as they approach graduation ceremonies and summer activities? Would you make your voice just a little bit louder for them as they grow and explore, as they meet challenges, as they cut loose for vacations and parties, as they buckle down for jobs, maybe as they head off to summer camp activities? Our young people, Lord, fuel their desire to know you, especially in all the busyness and excitement of being a kid. And God, would you drive our relationships to a place of love and grace for one another, just as you love and show your gracious spirit to us. Broaden our perspective, put people in our lives that we can learn from, and God, nudge us when we get lazy in our efforts to lift those around us. Lord, teach us to pray. Draw us to your word. Help us to understand it. Show us how to apply it to our lives. Forgive our sins. Hear our confessions and take those burdens of guilt and shame from us. Break those chains and set us free. Do a great work in us, God, so we can glorify you. So be it. Amen. My voice shall thou hear.
told you that I had been researching in the county archives and came across something really interesting that proved to me there were $3 million worth of gold bars buried in your backyard. Would you try to dig it up? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course you would, right? And if you weren't sure where it was, would that expensive landscaping even matter at that point? How many of you would tear up the whole yard if you knew there was $3 million worth of gold in your yard? Okay. What if I were to tell you that knowing God intimately, walking with him daily, are rewards worth far more than gold? but there aren't many people digging for it. I want us to start digging. I want us to ask and seek and knock and receive and find and have doors open to us. <clears throat> One way to develop that relationship with God is to begin practicing regular spiritual habits. Getting you to pray every day, getting you to pay attention to those prayers, reading God's word, Martin Luther very famously claimed that he had so much business, he said, I can't get on with it until spending three hours daily in prayer. Now, maybe not three hours daily, but many very well-known Christians have similar feelings. You just can't go forward until you've prayed. Hudson Taylor, who was a 19th century missionary to China, he admonished Christians to start every day in prayer. He, compa he compared our days to a symphony. He said, do not have your concert first and then tune your instrument afterward. Doesn't make sense. Begin the day with the word of God and prayer and get first of all into harmony with him. For many of us, our prayer lives leave something to be desired. Either we're too busy, or we feel ineffective, or we simply don't know what to say. Most of us can't imagine having a prayer life like Martin Luther, three hours a day of prayer. We can't imagine um, some of the prayer lives of the, the Christian devotionals that we read. But for the men and women who are writing those things and encouraging us in that way, they didn't arrive at that point after one day. It took them probably many years to establish that pattern and to learn to pray. Maybe it will take us many years. But what better time to start than today? So let's get digging, friends. Would you allow me to say a prayer of blessing for our potluck meal today as well as dismissal? Uh, let's pray. Father, as we leave this place today, we thank you for the way you have opened your word to us. We ask that you would fill us with your spirit in such a way that we are spurned forward to learn more, to work more, to be more. We strive to know you better. We want to walk closer to you. For those of us gathering today to have a meal together, Lord, would you bless that food prepared for us as nourishment for our bodies and bless the fellowship and the friendship at our tables as nourishment for our souls. Guide us on each and every step of our journey. Show up in our prayers, Lord. Bless us on our way. Amen. Let's stand and join in our closing hymn this morning, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. It's in the faith we sing. Uh, number 2158. <laughs>